I am trying to make it a interactive session as well as thought provoking thing because we have been witness of many changes in last 2 3 centuries and even in the medical field we can see that in last 100 years we have discovered so many things that were not discovered in last 1900 years and even in last 20 years we have discovered things that has been not discovered in 100 years and in last few years 3 to 4 years post covid we have discovered so many things our pace is also being changed when we were in our mds we were taught to attend all the emergencies the main thing is emergency infective disease but now non communicable disease non infective disease are taking leap and we are making a team of diabetologist or metabolic physician or technology driven thing to combat this non emergency things but in this just sometime we miss elephant in the house i need to change my slides from here yeah and and that elephant is acute emergency being diabetologist we are more focus on managing non communicable metabolic things but sometime we forget that when a diabetologist or a diabetic physician who is seeing more than 50 patient daily there may be some emergency that he has to identify because patient is coming to you at least 5 to 6 times a year and he is believing that my doctor is everything and if you make any mistake the life of the patient will be under threat like dr vikranti is witness last week that there was a one patient at sir's clinic patient came walking and while taking ecg the patient died on ecg couch so this kind of emergency i cannot change this slide please okay so first of all thank you dr bansi sabu sir and congratulate him for a wonderful 13 diacare con 2024 and as an part of organizing committee i will say thank you all for your presence and i would say that we have to make things to happen in practice apna gujarati ma साबुदीन साहेब ने बहुत सरस बात है कि ज्ञान वगैरह आचरण नकामो और आचरण वगैरह ज्ञान नकामो सवार में जी इनोग्रेशन शशांक जोशी सर सेड दैट सीटिंग इज न्यू स्मोकिंग सो आई थिंक वी बहुत आर सीटिंग सीन्स मोर देन टू अवर्स और पटनी सर आटला सरस टॉक पीछे आप स्टेडिंग ओवेशन आपव जीए सो प्लीज स्टेड अप एट योर प्लेज एंड हेव थ्री राउंड ऑफ अपलॉस थैंक यू सो मच सो वी हेव टू have physical activity even when we are attending a lecture or seeing a patient so again come to the topic what are the emergencies in person with diabetes yes we are all aware that diabetic ketoacidosis second is hhs and third is hypoglycemia but are these only emergencies happening in patient with diabetes no there are so many other emergencies that we have to manage and first we have to understand what is emergency and what is urgency when it is emergency it requires your intervention within minutes you have to decide that this patient requires this therapy or this reference and you have to take action within minutes if it is urgency you can have hours to manage that thing so now not i am talking only about glycemic emergency in diabetes because we have a separate talk on hypoglycemia separate talk on dk and separate talk on hhs but i will mainly focus on vascular and infectious emergency can anybody tell me what are the infectious emergency that are you seeing in your day to day diabetic practice any three or four cellulitis mainly diabetic foot mucormycosis pyelonephritis one important is missing still gangrenous cholecystitis and first and most important i would say is fornier's gangrene in the era when we are using sglt2 in each and every patient and we are knowing that there may be a genital infection because of sglt2 sometime we overlook patients complain but we need to be very very careful that it is a perineal skin and muscle involvement it is a polymicrobial infection it is a end arthritis infection and it may be life threatening if you do not do surgical intervention within day in this patient so fornier's gangrene even happens in female not only on testicular skin but in perineal skin the female can also have this fornier's gangrene and mind you it is a very very emergency situation and you have to deal 
surgically along with good glycemic control to save patient's life. Second most important is empiezometers pyelonephritis. I will give you a real world case. I had one patient before few months, a young male with diabetes, fairly control of diabetes, even see between 7 to 9 in last 6 months, 2, 3 times. Patient has a repeated bout of fever. Every 15 days he has a fever, he consults some general practitioner or some physician or some diabetologist, but the fever was recurring after every 15 days and he has a complaint of severe backache. Taking a detailed history, I found that now he is taking Denpi very regularly. Usko pata chal gaya ne khabar padi ki ek bhi taav to aav to raise dukha ho tato raise itle Denpi lide kare je. And because of that, his fever fever is masked. There was no fever, and only some pain and some fever when he stops medicine. And when we do his CT scan, we found that he was having empyzomatous pyelonephritis. And again, it is a life-threatening emergency. We have to admit this patient in ICU, we have to do culture of blood as well as urine and we have to see that this patient recovers within 14 days from that infection. Third most info important infection is malignant otitis externa. Patient complaining of earache and some blackies discharged from ear attend that complaint very very seriously because malignant otitis externa is a pseudomonas infection and it can cause infection in brain through the ostium of your skull and we have to attend that very very carefully. Again this patient require a hospitalization and IV antibiotic for the management a part of good glycemic control. And post covid we all are aware of mucormycosis. Before covid it was a diagnostic test for diabetes. If a patient come with mucor unless put otherwise he or she is suffering from diabetes and again we all are aware how dreadful the mucor is. So, these are some infective emergencies that we need to understand, we have to attend and we have to treat as a diabetologist because patient is trusting you, patient is having faith in you and he will do whatever you say. If you say it is not an emergency thing, take this medicine and go home, they will not consult any other specialist. Now, let us talk about vascular emergencies. What are the vascular emergencies you can have? in your clinic when you are practicing as a diabetologist, you are seeing 30, 40, 50 patients and what vascular emergency you should not miss. Can you tell me anything? Gangrene, then PVD, peripheral vascular disease, then stroke and MI. I remember when we were at Kolkata, Parag Bhai was with me and एमने एमज में फोन करे तो कारण क्या मैं क्या छुटा पड़ी गया था ने फोन एमना क्लिनिक पर डाइवर्ट था अने मैं एमना स्टाफ साथे बात करी मैं को मने छाती में दुखे जे अबे हम सो करी तो स्टाफ वास के सरे कहलू छे के क्या रे कोई पेशेंट नो आवे फोन आवे चेस पे इंतजार जन साये बाजार न थी तो एमने बड़ोड़ा that kind of management is required. If you are not in the clinic, the patient is coming to call, then your staff should know what should be done and what should not be done. But first and most important vascular complication in diabetic is diabetes foot. We all are aware that diabetic foot is a second most common cause of amputation after road traffic accident. And after amputation, the life expectancy is less than 5 years. We have so many patients of diabetes, we see diabetic patient with MI, we see diabetic patient with uh, stroke, we see diabetic patient on CKD, but we do not see more patient of diabetes with amputation because after amputation the life expectancy is less than 5 years, worse than having cancer, worse than having MI, worse than having CKD. So we must prevent diabetic foot to develop. We have to start from very beginning. When the patient is coming at your clinic for the very first time, you have to see their feet and we have to categorize the feet in a normal feet, high risk kit or already infected or already damaged feet. And according to that, you have to manage that to prevent any infection, gangrene and in the later part any amputation. Talking about myocardial infarction, we all are aware that in diabetic patient, MI may be silent. What do you mean by silent MI? Can anybody tell me? There is no sign and symptom, patient may not have severe chest pain or gabraman or breathlessness. Patient may have very atypical complaint. Patient may say, Aje mana ke ke uthai che je pehla kya re thai unha thi. That may be the sign of MI. Umara putan experience ko, there was a one 65 years of male, that uncle was coming and telling, I have some food stuck in my chest. 
સવારે નાસ્તા કર્યા પછી છાતીમાં કંઈક ભારે લાગે છે અને કંઈક ખાવાનું ફસાય એવું લાગે છે એન્ડ ધેટ વોઝ એન્ટીરિવોલ એમ આઈ દેર વોઝ વન પેશન્ટ હુ હેઝ પેઇન ઇન ઓનલી લેફ્ટ લિટલ ફિંગર એન્ડ આઈ હેવ સીન દેટ પેશન્ટ હી વોઝ હેવિંગ એમ આઈ આઈ હેવ સીન ધ પેશન્ટ પ્રેઝન્ટેડ વિથ ડાયરિયા બટ ઇઝ લુક વોઝ નોટ ફાઇન એન્ડ આઈ ટુક હિઝ ઇસીજી હી વોઝ હેવિંગ એન્ફિરિવોલ એમ આઈ સો ઇટ ઇઝ રિટર્ન ઇન હેરિસન દેટ ફ્રોમ ચીન ટુ અમ્બિલિકસ ઇફ યુ હેવ એની ડિસ્કમ્ફર્ટ you have to do ecg and specifically in diabetic patient because they have severe autonomic dysfunction they have severe degree of neuropathy and any atypical symptom if patient is telling that aje mane saru nathi ne su thai che mane nathi khabar first thing you should do in your clinic is ecg because ecg is life saving 50% of the patient with mi do not reach hospital because of the late diagnosis tamara pase aavse tame vat karse tame ecg padvano rahi gayo may the patient may not come again to you so again mi is very very important emergency and then i will say stroke how will you define stroke to explain your patient or anybody you are teaching stroke is a sudden thing if anything happens suddenly it's a stroke you start feeling that your hands are not working properly you are not sensing anything properly you cannot speak anything properly you cannot understand anything properly any sensory motor thing that happens suddenly is a stroke and we have to identify stroke because uh, again if you miss stroke it can be very very uh, increasing morbidity in patient's future life and what happens in stroke in diabetic patient because of peripheral neuropathy we are giving full dose of pregabalin we give we are giving full dose of duloxetine and when patient having posterior circulation stroke and patient complaining of dizziness or giddiness we consider as a side effect of the anti neuropathic medicine we do not do plantar examination we do not do rombok test and we say ki a to bhi tamne chakkar le dukhavani dawa api che ena karane thoda chakkar aave che so i would say never never Uh, underestimate any complaint of patient specifically when they are complaining of dizziness you have to do cns examination because it can be a posterior circulation stroke again talking about aphasia and dysphagia sometimes this aphasia and dysphagia dysphagia are considered as a hypoglycemic symptom ke patient ne sugar down thayu hase thoda samay bolva ma taklif padi hase it can be a transient ischemic attack they it may have major stroke within few days so again we have to see that whether that hypoglycemia was actual hypoglycemia or patient was having transient ischemic event we have to see that the, the hypoglycemia should be documented and if you correct the hypoglycemia it is a vipal stirred that it should be corrected postural imbalance is a part of posterior circulation stroke and sudden severe headache can be a acute hemorrhage in the brain specifically in pons area so if patient is complaining ek mahina thi mathu dukhe che it is not an important complaint but if patient is complaining ke ek kallak thi mathu dukhe che attend that complaint very very sincerely so it's a vicious cycle that uh, we have acute traditional complication but we have to understand there is a vascular and infectious complication that can be life threatening and along with maintaining quality of life we should not miss this symptom of acute emergency again i will say that there is a special lecture on dk in other hall there is a special talk on hypoglycemia management and there is special talk on hhs but in this 15 minute i would like to more focus on vascular and infectious emergency because now when we are focusing more on non communicable cable disease sometime we miss acute mi acute stroke and uh, diabetic foot in our patients so again prevention is always 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 better than cure whenever you see the patient see the patient completely take uh, bilateral radial pulses take dorsal spadies take posterior tibial circulation uh, pulses also take a carotid pulse also see the foot is a low risk high risk or already infective and take annual ecg of your patient with that i would say thank you and if there is any question uh, we can address